have been the backbone of our nation since the beginning of time. At least that's what we've been told. There's no time that you turn on your phone or your television and you don't hear leaders saying that small businesses are the backbone of our nation. However, in 2020, one third of all small businesses had to close their doors. Now tell me, if you are the backbone, if you are the one holding everyone together, then why would a one third of the backbone be allowed to close? There's over 32 million businesses in the United States, and of those 32 million, 31 million are small businesses. That's more than 99% of all businesses being small in the U.S. So again, why have they been allowed to fail? What could have prevented closures, loss of jobs, loss of income? What could have been done to prevent that? The answer and the solution is simple, financial relief funding. For far too long, banks have had the opportunity to close the doors on small business owners, leaving them to figure out how to make capital for themselves, how to make payroll, how to pay themselves, how to expand, how to pay, buy equipment. That has to change. The New York Times released an article saying that in 2021, majority of minority entrepreneurs were denied the Paytech Protection Loan through traditional banks. They had to turn around and apply through what is now called financial technology companies or FinTech. FinTech proved to be the savior for minority businesses with applying for Paytech Protection. Now, why is that? because of years of discrimination, years of traditional and larger banks thinking that small business minority owners were not worthy of their capital, and that needs to change. FinTech has raised over $98 million just in the first half of 2021. Compare that to $121 million raised in total in 2020. Now, what is a FinTech? A FinTech is a financial technology company that provides a tailored array of solutions for businesses, accounting, payment processing, financial and capital loans. And we need to become more comfortable with approaching FinTechs as opposed to going to knock on our local bank. And we want to do that because FinTech has provided an, an excellent platform for us to be able to apply for funding quickly within 30 minutes. Long gone are the days of gathering all of your documents, sifting through your business plan, making sure that you have all of your T's dotted and your, your T's crossed and your I's dotted. FinTech allows you to pick up your phone, hop online, and in 30 minutes, you can find out if you've been approved for the capital that you may need to simply save your business. FinTech has provided a way and they are providing opportunities for small businesses where larger and traditional banks seem to lag. Now, fintechs are backed by the illustrious, limitless, influential venture capitals. Venture capitals for the longest have been a secret society, making way and providing the funds for apps that we know, such as Spotify, Snapchat, Airbnb. They're usually backed by a large group of investors who have a, an assorted amount of funds that they can put behind a founder that they feel is going to allow them to take an app to the next level. But now that the lines are blurring between startups and small businesses, venture capitals are starting to sit up straight and pay a little bit more attention to small businesses. They understand that they have a unique opportunity to create small local firms in the community to serve these small businesses. And in turn, they're almost guaranteed a return on their investment. Venture capitals now are starting to see the value in partnering with small businesses. They're starting to see how small businesses are truly the impactor of local communities. They provide jobs, they provide housing, they really are the glue that holds everything together. And so now venture capitals want to get a piece of that pie. Now venture capitals are they're great because they allow you to obtain capital and funding without having to repay like a traditional bank. If you need $100,000, a venture capital can come in and provide seed funding for your small business with no repayment option. 
as opposed to applying for a traditional loan where you have to worry about the interest rates, the terms, when you're going to repay. If you have the money to repay, you don't have to do that with a venture capital. In exchange, you give a portion of your equity, but in exchange for, the, exchange for that equity, you're gaining partnerships, you're gaining a community of experts, and you're getting capital that doesn't need to be repaid. So venture capitals are a great way to come in and to be a savior of small businesses. Now, much like venture capitals, crowdfunding is another great alternative financing option for small businesses. I like crowdfunding because it allows for business owners and founders to build a community of potential customers. So what you have is the ability to market your business and build a customer base while allowing that customer to feel like they are a part of what you're doing, which will then entail entice them to open up their wallets. And that's really what we want. We want people to open your wallets to your business. So crowdfunding is a great alternative solution. It allows you to build out a platform, get to know your potential customers, get to know your investors, open the door for them to provide feedback, which will then be beneficial to you as the business owner, because you get to hear what it is that people are looking for and what they want, which will allow you to grow your business successfully. I like crowdfunding because much like venture capital, there is no repayment option, but you don't have to give away a portion of your equity. It's true, authentic building of your business backed by people who believe in what it is that you're doing. Now, crowdfunding has been around for, for years now. And in 2015, they raised over $15 million for small projects. Now think of what that would look like today for art projects, for traveling projects, for all types of small businesses that again, service the community. And so banks, they really can't compete with this. It's hard to come in and build a platform centered strictly around community when you've been, turned, you've been turning people away for centuries now. So minority owned businesses, small businesses, founders, entrepreneurs, crowdfunding, again, is an awesome alternative to funding your small business. Now with crowdfunding, I like it because again, there is no repayment and much like crowdfunding, grants too do not allow you to repay. Grants are my favorite type of alternative financing. I am a grant fanatic. And the reason why I like grants because they're fairly simple. They're straightforward. They get to the point, you know, how much you're going to get, you know, exactly when you're going to get it. And typically, you know, who you're getting that money for, from. Now with grants, let's say, for example, you know that you need to raise $250,000. Well, the great thing about this is there's no application to pull your credit. There's not a lot of asking about, well, how much money do you have now and how much money do you project? The grant is there to solely provide the resource and the capital that you need to expand and grow your business. So with grants, typically it involves either an online application, which can range between five minutes to 20 minutes, or a more detailed grant proposal where you do have to gather documents and talk about your board of directors and talk about the business's goals and mission. But these funds are available to your business free of charge with no repayments, no terms and conditions, no interest rates, no interest rates that are required. So they are an awesome and sustainable solution as alternate funding for your small business. Now, again, as I said before, I am a huge fan of grants. They are my favorite source of funding because not only do you get access to an unlimited amount of capital, and when I say unlimited, you can apply for 50 grants in one year. And who's to say that you won't get each 50 grant that you apply for? So that is unlimited capital for your business. Another reason why I like them is because typically, again, you're building a community. You're building a relationship with the person who's going to grant that money to you. And they don't really just give you the money and walk away. You know, they want to establish a, a relationship with you. They want to know more about your business. And typically, they're able to provide you to their network of people who may be granting grants and who are experts maybe in your industry as well. And so that's why grants are my favorite type of alternate funding. Now, I'm sure you've heard of everything that I've just spoken about. 
But the problem is a lot of small business owners don't know where to look. This information is typically not readily available to them. And if they do try to surf for it on the internet, there's loads and loads of information that seems to be coded in a different language. And you really can't understand what you're reading. So there needs to be a more simple place for small business owners to be able to go where they can access all of the funding solutions available to them. Now, if you've visited these US government small business administration website, then you know that they do put that information out there, but it's, it's really not the easiest to navigate. Um, it's a little dated and the information is kind of hard to find. You have to sift and sign and sift and sign and, when you are a business owner and you're in the position to, to you and you need to pay your people right away, or you need to purchase equipment, or you need to prevent your doors from being closed, no one wants to spend hours and hours on the Small Business Administration's website, hoping and sifting and surfing for some type of capital. There needs to be a more tailored solution where small business owners can get quick and ac quick access to what funding options are available, quick access to FinTech, quick access to a list of venture capital investors, quick access to what platforms to use for crowdfunding, and quick access to grants that are available or coming up available. Also, a lot of people don't know that the U.S. Treasury has in place two solutions that I think that are great for small businesses. One is called a Community Deve Development Financial Institution, also known as CDFIs, and a minority development institution known as NDIs. And these institutions are part of the US Treasury government's branch, and they are required to provide funding to communities which they serve. So CDFIs are required to pro provide funding to minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, businesses in low, in low income communities. These businesses are also known as disadvantaged businesses in disadvantaged communities. They have a set amount of dollars that they are required to loan out to these particular types of businesses. MDIs are the same way. They are required to pay out a certain amount of money to minority owned businesses. But a lot of people may not know that. It takes time, energy, and effort to go scouring the internet to learn what these what these two institutions are. Who has time for that? You're running a business, you probably have a family, you're trying to keep your doors open and pay yourself and hire some type of help. No one has time to sit on the internet trying to find out what's the best solution. So what can be done? There needs to be a system in place that scours down and tailors to small business owners, or with just a simple click of a button, you can find out what solutions and what options are available to you. So what can save the backbone of our nation? What can prevent hundreds of thousands of small businesses from closing their doors, from having to lay off people, from loss of income? Financial relief. Financial relief from those that are in place that have the ability to do so from venture capitals, to no longer being a secret society, to opening up their doors and opening up their investors to small businesses, to FinTech becoming more aggressive, more prominent, to becoming the, the face of small business funding, to minority depository institutions becoming more readily available, putting that information out there for small business owners to know about, for community development financial institutions, you could potentially save someone's business. All of this information needs to be available to small businesses. And just maybe, maybe if they become more aggressive and they become the ones that say, we're going to save small businesses, it will force traditional and large banks to take a step back and look at themselves and say, have we been closing the doors on small businesses for too long? Have we denied small business minority owners for too long? What can we do to step our game up, to make funding available, and to really truly save the backbone of this nation? Thank you. Yeah, man, clap it up for Deanna. Baby, she broke it down, all the points. People are saying they had to hit the replay because they couldn't even keep up with the notes. And she dropped the mic. That's right. She gave it to you and she left the stage. She said, do something with it. 
Uh, I love it, love it, love it. Uh, Deanna, I'm putting you on the spot. If you want to come to the stage, mama, definitely raise your hand. I'll pull you up here. Um, I'm sure some people want to give you some flowers for this. Uh, here she is, ladies and gentlemen, bringing her to the stage right now. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Uh, you cute, sis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy I could get that information out to you all because Casey and you know, you know, having been in the banking industry all those years, they don't fund people that look like us. They don't fund no, they women, don't. especially don't fund black women. Like it's no, just, it's happening. And so I feel like if we force their hands, especially in this climate that we're in, especially since we're in the support black businesses and, you know, these large corporations really wanting to be the ones to say, oh, we're, we're, you know, changing the game and we're supporting black businesses and minority owned businesses. Okay. Let's see it. Say That's it. what you're saying. We need to do, Move, and it do needs something. to be aggressive yep. and it, it needs to be known, not just for social media, not That's just right. for the internet. We need to see this happening in the communities yep. because small businesses are the ones. They're really the one. And you hear it all the time, the backbone, the backbone. Right. I'm not going to let my back give out. I'm right. going to really find care. out. Yep. Exactly. What do That's I right. need to do to make sure the thing that is holding me up and holding me in place and really the institution that's providing jobs in these communities and yep. the communities that we're looking to serve, what can we do to make sure they're not the ones closing our doors? Okay. And so I, I really like that the, the New York Times, uh, the New York Times released the article about the discrimination from the larger banks mm -hmm. when it came to the PPP loans, especially mm -hmm. because a lot of times I hear people saying, well, there was so much PPP fraud and, you know, people were committing fraud on these applications. That's beyond the point. Right. These small businesses and these individuals who may have gotten twenty five, thirty thousand dollars from the PPP, that's nothing. That's it's nothing. these large businesses. They got millions and millions of dollars they that they didn't need that could have gone into did. the pockets of small businesses. And so people need to know that this information is out there and that the money is available. Yeah, that's so good, um, Deanna. And, and I'm happy that you are like somebody said, you said and you dropped the mic like this is what it takes y'all like like not being in those spaces and being like oh my gosh i'm just grateful to have a position so i'm gonna keep my mouth closed but no right. like <laughs> that same energy when you get there right because they need to be held accountable right and we're not gonna wait on them we're gonna still do our thing on the side huh right. um but yeah they owe us something like you said right. um love 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 it and, and anybody that has questions i see them q aing up so I'm gonna bring them on. I'm gonna show these on the stage, um, Deanna, um, so you can answer these. Um, first one is from Nina. She says, "Deanna, replay, replay, replay." Thank you. My question is, what would be your approach for service businesses that may or may not have a physical product? That's okay. You don't have to have a physical product if you're selling yourself, if you're selling your words, if you're doing consulting, it's that's a product. It doesn't have to be something that you can touch because the words that are coming out of your mouth is the product. Your words are what's going to change another business or another person. When you're applying for these grants, you want to make sure that you emphasize that. That no, I might not be selling candles, but the words that are coming out of my mouth is what's going to take another business or another person to the next level. So you're okay. still going to apply for the loans. You're still going to apply for the grants. You're okay. still going to go to your local CDFIs and NDIs. And I'll drop in the chat the links where you can find uh, those two particular institutions in your community. It's really simple. You just search by your zip code. So it's not about having a, a physical, tangible item. Your business is still a viable business and you can still aggressively go after the money. I, I, I do strategic planning. That's not a service that you can hold in your hand, but right. it is a service that I provide to other businesses that can help launch them to the next position or that can help right. you know prevent closing their doors. And so when I apply for grants, I tell that story. This is right. what I do. This is how I service my community. This is how I service businesses. So it doesn't need to be a physical product. You just need to sell your business as if it is the one that is going to save the day. It's not That's about right. a physical product. It's really about you and what your business is. That's good. Uh, thank you so much, Deanna. And Rose, that she had that same question too. I saw a lot of chat, so I think that, I mean, a lot of hearts. So I think that resonated with people. 
Um, and I want to underscore what Deanna said about when she tells her story. Listen, listen, Linda, listen, Linda. <laughs> Y'all have to take these plans and translate them into words that these people understand, right? So when you're applying for grants or loans, what are you spending money on? Tell them, I need to market. I need to hire a branding expert. I need to, to pay for technology. I need a computer, right? Like, yeah. Just because you're not selling products doesn't mean you don't have expenses, right? And if you don't know what your expenses are, that means you need to plan better, right? Because right. if you can't tell them what you're gonna use the money for, you're not gonna give your cousin the money when they can't tell you what they exactly. use. <laughs> Come on now, right? right? So uh, she said, tell your stories. So Y'all gotta tell your story. You gotta open your mouths, right? And really articulate what it is that you need. And I get, as a community, we don't do that often. So the reps aren't there, right? But right. start somewhere. Um, Diana's, Diana's preaching. Okay, so I'm going to bring a next another question to the stage. Sis. So this one is from Janelle. She says, thank you so much, Diana. I've heard that grant funding is very who you know based. How do you recommend connecting to the right people for grant funding? Okay, so grants work in two, two ways. And I've really seen this in the last year. There's quick online grant applications where you don't have to submit a full grant proposal. And that's online. That's that's literally system based. You put your information in and a, a system decides whether or not you're eligible. But when it comes to grant proposal and really getting your foot in the doors, networking is going to be key. You want to spend time on social media. You want to spend time going to virtual local events and really getting yourself out there and rubbing elbows. It's just like that in the career industry. When you when you want to jump careers and you want to get a quick way in, and get it in through the door easily, networking is going to be your best solution. So I recommend that you pull on your own your resources, whether it be from work, whether it be from your own your own community, whether it be from the people in your circle. And if you don't have people in your circle, they have people in their circle and really getting out there in the community and joining these local events, joining these local chapters, joining these local um, community raisers be really being a part of the community that you're looking to serve so that you can network and put yourself out there and then becoming comfortable if you're going to go after grants especially federal grants becoming comfortable with your city and state legislators because they're always looking to give out money especially for nonprofit organizations and businesses that's looking to service the community in the areas that they're focused in get comfortable with spending time with your city regulators and your city legislators and your state legislators because they really have the ends they have the ends they know the people they know the key players they know where the money is so that's what you want to do you want to spend time networking and put yourself out there and i i can't stress this enough you want to be aggressive when i say aggressive i mean always looking for the capital all the time and then to around the banking piece getting to have a personal relationship with your banker that is key because your banker is going to be the one that's advocating for you when it comes time to applying for loans your banker is going to be the one that knows what your finances look like they can prevent right. the, they can present the money the proposals and the documents that the underwriters need so it's all going to be about relationships and networking that's how you get your foot in the door not just sitting back waiting for the money to fall in your your lap but really putting yourself out there doing the grant proposals because even if you're getting rejected at least they are coming across the desk of the person that has to look at the application right. so if your name has come up a hundred times eventually they're going to say you know what this person has been pursuing us for two years right. let's see what they're talking about you have to be aggressive don't get discouraged put yourself out there do the grant proposals and don't stop until you start to see results I say that's good. That's good. That's good. I gotta let that marinate for a minute. That's <laughs> good. Say, I gotta get out of my way. Yes, get out of your way. <laughs> you yeah. have to step outside of yourself and realize that the money is out there. You just have somebody is getting it. Somebody right. is getting the money. It may as well be you. It, what's that's the worst right. that they can what can happen is say no. Okay, that's right. try again. And you that's just right. keep going and keep and keep doing it until you get. And once you get that first grant the money, the floodgates just open after mm -hmm. that. It's the first one, then the second one comes because people see, okay, you are already approved for this one. So we know that you're responsible with the money. So now mm -hmm. we want to give you more money. We want to be a partner. We want to be the ones to say, oh, we're partnering with this black owned business, this black owned woman business. So put yourself out there and, and don't let fear and uh, stagnation stop you. 
Yep, that's game, y'all. This is game. Um, I'm going to keep going with these questions because we haven't really queuing up. So this one is from Rose. She says, I'm trying to get funding for my remote online notarization platform. I'm trying to build which which entity should I reach out to or should I tap them all? So I would recommend for your notary business, the quickest way you're probably going to find funding is one through the FinTech because they can give you approval, honestly, in less than 15 minutes right online. Or two, if you want to go for the, the grant option, there's so many online grant um, opportunities that come up weekly, honestly, and they're not necessarily tailored to a particular industry. They're just for um, women on businesses. So like the Amber Grants for Women, they give out a $10,000 grant every month. It's not for a specific industry. It's strictly for women on businesses. There's so many different institutions. Online grants are probably going to be your best route. Tori Birch, every quarter she opens up a funding opportunity yeah. for women owned businesses. And it's not tailored to a specific, it's strictly for women owned businesses. There's always minority owned businesses. And these applications, they're online. All you have to do is go on and again, tell your story. What do you do? You provide notary services. Okay, how does that help the community? What does that, how does that make you stand out? Tell your story in these online applications. And there, there may be 15 minutes to fill them out. And they communicate with you. They tell you what rounds they're in. They let you know if you've been funded, if you haven't been funded. But the online and fintech are going to be your quickest solutions to getting funding for your notary services. Ashe, that's good. That's good. Um, and y'all, uh, Deanna put a call, a challenge to the world, to the industry, right? To the finance industry to show up better for us. If we the backbone, show that, right? right. Uh, they ain't there yet, but they <laughs> They're inching towards. I'm gonna drop this in the chat and share this. Oh, I dropped it in the wrong place. I'm gonna and I'm gonna share it on the stage. Um, Bank of America just came out with this capital directory. It's called the Women's Capital Directory. Um, I'm gonna show it on the stage. I need y'all to pin this to your browser. If you don't know how to pin this to your browser, this is an activity you need to learn how to do so you have your resources on ready all the time, right? Um, go to this website, pin it, favorite it to your browser so that you're checking that thing all the time. And it is the, the best I've seen of pulling together thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of grants, yep. banks, CDI. I mean, all kinds of people that give money and it's tailored directly towards women because we have such a hard time. Not black women, but women. Um, right. So keep that on the ready. Keep that on the ready. And always check. I as soon as I found out about it, I applied for a grant, and I found out last week I got it. Right. So congratulations. Me, thank you so much. It helped me be efficient, right? Instead of spending because it takes days to find all these sites. Yep. Um, I could just apply to every every single link there, huh? Somebody say amen. Okay. So and that's the this, best thing that Bank of America could have done. Look, look yeah. how simple that was for them to make that information in one place and put it out there. They, we yeah. need to, there needs to be more of that. We shouldn't be spending hours on the internet just looking for $5,000 worth of funding. No, yeah. there should be one place you go to and here's the resources and the information. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And that was my first one. So uh, Deanna is, is, Deanna is right, right? Like I've been applying all year. That was my first one. It's just a numbers game. Like these people don't know you from Oregon, like Akia said, but if you do it a hundred times, Versus five times, you got a higher chance on a hundred times. So just keep going. Um, Deanna has dropped another link in the chat. Oh, this is so good, y'all. We got another funding talk next. I started a little bit late for y'all because I love y'all. Uh, let me pull one more question to the stage. Uh, man. Oh, there's not a link in here. Oh, good. There's, there's only one more question. There's two questions. This is a comment. I would just read out that. Casey says all the time, we got to get our reps in. Yeah, that means even yeah. when it's a no. When it's a no, it's okay. Um, where did it go? I'm gonna be back up in this thing to get more reps. That's all. That's it. Like Akia said, that's it. Okay, let's take this question from Neff. Uh, Deanna, heart eyes. This is great. Along the lines of Nina's question, could the sessions be classified as units, or is it, or is that doing too much? Could are you? Are you talking? Put some more information in the chat now. Yeah, Are you can you clarify about that for me? Her products, like the way she's defining her products. She said yes. Oh, the way she's defining her products. So, do you mean for each? Could the session be classified? 
Or am I doing too? I much? guess she's trying to say when she's trying to show her sales, when they're trying to show their sales. But honestly, you just speak to revenue, right? And then yeah, the average you're just speaking to revenue. Rate. Really, that's really all they want to see is is the revenue. Some mm -hmm. places do have some. Um, some grants do have uh, like maybe a hundred and a hundred thousand dollar revenue minimum to apply, but that's normal. And I don't want you all to be discouraged because that's a small business, a hundred thousand dollars in revenue for a small business. I had an application asking about units and I just walked away from it. Nefertiri, can you, can you, I, I don't know if we follow each other on, on social media, but if so, can you send that to me? Cause I would like to see it. Because I, I don't I'm not exactly sure what that what that's referring to. Um, but, yeah, they typically just want to know about revenue. They want to know about revenue and what you're going to do with the money that they're going to give you. They want to know what, what you're going to do with this money. If we give you our money, what are you going to do with it? Mm hmm. Which is reasonable because we do that to our cousins now, right? Right. We do that. Uh, I'm, you want a hundred dollars <laughs> for what? For what? For what? what? You need groceries what you or you trying to get a tattoo? Like, come what on. You come on. Um, okay, so the last two questions, and it's it, y'all. They're the same. So I'm just going to show one of them, and it'll answer both. And then we'll go over to the next TED Talk, which is called dun, 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 Liability or Legacy. Uh, edges will be snatched, okay? Um, okay, this one is from Jazz. She asks, do you suggest working with a grant writer when pursuing grants that go through a proposal process or do it yourself? I would suggest for the first maybe five grants that you're doing, if you can afford it, look, let me, if you can afford it, because grant writers can be really expensive, try to work with an industry expert. But if you can't, you can definitely learn how to write grants on your own. It's not rocket science. It just takes a lot of energy and effort. It takes time gathering the documents, making sure that you're dotting all of your I's and crossing all of your T's. But if you can afford a grant writer for the first few times, go for it. They're, they're going to be very beneficial to you. And usually grant writers, people that have been around long enough, they have the network. They know people they know the right grants to apply for but if you can't afford that that's okay don't allow that to discourage you because you can learn how to write grants on your own i actually teach a course on how to write grants um it's just a lot of paperwork really it's it's just a lot of paperwork it's a lot of typing a lot of gathering of the documents but it is something that you can do so if you can't afford it don't be fearful you can definitely diy it dope um, Y'all enroll in that course uh, so you can learn how to write grants. Uh, we're about to wrap this up, but I just want to um, also say, because these are some hacks on here, and we're learning how to work smarter, not harder. These are gems, because if you hire a person for the first few times, like Deanna said, right, you'll get a whole lot of text. And what you should do, hack, here we come, copy and paste mm -hmm. that into these Word documents or these Google Docs, right? Every, write the question. This is what I did because I hired a person initially and then that phased out because I'm like, oh, okay, well, till the money come, I can't I can't keep paying you, sis, huh? Right. But right. I had the text, right? So every single question, make sure they're logging it and writing their answers. And you're eventually going to have pages and pages and pages worth of copy-paste text, right? These are called canned responses. Whenever you see that term, that's what that is. You're working smarter, not harder. And when you do these applications, you'll start knocking them out quick because you copy paste, maybe change a few words, right? So when I went through that women's capital directory, I copy paste from that sheet she did, right? She wasn't with me yeah. anymore, but I copy paste from that sheet and I got the grant, right? So work smarter, not harder, just keep it all canned. And the same thing for these files Deanna is talking about. Go, if you don't take it behind the Google Drive and create folders that say grant documents and every time somebody asks you for something, you upload it, but you also make a copy there. So the next time you're just pulling it from Google Docs, like make sure you have systems in place to make this stuff easy. Uh, Deanna, thank you so much. This was super fire. We're going to super fire. Get, let me tell this you one more fun. time. Super fire, you killed. I'm so okay. happy you all enjoyed this information. We need this money. Get the money, y'all. It's money. out here. Let's get it. Okay. All right, y'all. So we're going to hop over to the next session, which is called Liability or Legacy. This is presented to us by Lindsay. Lindsay snatched some edges yesterday and raised some ancestors. Um, so she's going to give us a TED Talk right now. I'll see y'all on the other side. Peace.